Uh, hi. Um, um, okay, sorry. Uh, hi. Um, I'll be talking on this uh, 3D object detection and uh, for autonomous vehicle using multimodal temporal data. And this uh, this uh, research work is supervised by Dr. Sus uh, Dr. Susan Little and Professor Nicole Corner. Uh, the content of my presentation starts with the introduction, motivation, hypothesis, literature review, preliminary work done, and research methodology applied to further carry out the uh, proposed work and the research timeline. So to start with, say, uh, <clears throat> at, uh, like uh, the autonomous vehicle or the instrumented vehicles is equipped with different various sensors like radars, uh, cameras, uh, radars for, uh, for capturing huge uh, data. Uh, to sense the uh, surrounding environment, uh, to have a better uh, development of the perception systems so that the system can uh, perceive, predict, decide, and execute the necessary actions required for the autonomous vehicle to uh, navigate in the real world without having any coll uh, collision. And on, on an average, this un un autonomous vehicle can record about 1.4 uh, terabyte of data or to around 19 TB per hour, which on an overall per day it can capture around 11 TB to 152, 152 TB of data, which is a huge amount of data, which is very much required for present uh, development of the, uh, the perception system of the uh, autonomous vehicles. So this is the uh, uh, like high level uh, diagram of the autonomous vehicle systems, which consists of uh, uh, like various sensors, which includes camera, radar, 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 GPS, and others. And the environmental perception system's task is to have to do, to, to, uh, do the uh, various uh, computer vision activities like uh, lane detection, traffic, and uh, detection classification, uh, and uh, object tracking and uh, object detection and tracking, free space detection and localization. And out of which we can see that the uh, more of more or less in most of the applications where you have one of the sensors being used. And in case of object tracking, this is the place where use of multimodal, uh, multi multiple uh, modalities can be uh, like are employed for uh, improvising the object detection uh, tracking task and which forms the uh, focus area in the current research to have the object detection and tracking, making use of uh, object detection, making use of uh, multi uh, multiple sensor modalities. And <clears throat> with the motivation, uh, in this uh, for this project is less. See, this 2D image uh, object detection, uh, when compared to the 3D object detection, what is missing with the 2D detection is the depth information, which is very much required for the autonomous vehicle. And when we compare uh, the uh, accuracy results from the uh, popular kitty object detection report, for the cars, we have around 95%, whereas for the 3D object detection, the accuracy of the car is around 83%. Clearly, there's a gap of around by 12%. And when it comes to pedestrian, there is a huge gap of about 30, 35%. And seriously, this formed the gap. And this gap is because of many, uh, like due to occlusion while doing uh, 3D object detection, occlusion, uh, like the uh, review at which the vehicle is being uh, the different perspectives. And this gap need to be bridged. And Next, uh, the motivation is towards the uh, employing the temporal information. Temporal information is uh, is extensively used in for 2D object detection. And here, this is one of the examples where uh, the objective is to uh, detect the bird. And you can we can see from this uh, example that it, the, the, there are a lot of misdetection. But with the use of temporal information, so the detection uh, the de detection accuracy has been improved. So why? it is more important, more relevant with respect to 3D object detection is this. Say in 3D object detection or uh, in case of like autonomous vehicle, when it is driving in the, uh, in the environment, it captures a huge amount of data, which has some temporal uh, references. And these temporal references can be utilized for improving the object, de uh, object uh, detection. And next is like, there is not much focus has been given for employing the temporal information for uh, for uh, 3D object detection. So this is the, yep. The next is based on this motivation, we, uh, the hypothesis of the current research works uh, have uh, like, can be uh, like, is for, uh, formalized like this. 
Multimodal information can contribute to bridge the gap between the 2D image space to the 3D metric space by improving the accuracy of the deep learning framework for 3D object detection. And with this hypothesis, we have the following research questions. The first research question is to, have, to how uh, we can prepare the multimodal data for training deep, uh, deep networks. The second question is how can temporal information be extracted from the multimodal data? So with this, there are two sub-questions. Say so what is the most reliable approach that can be employed for uh, extracting this temporal information? The potential candidate, uh, candidate uh, uh, includes the long uh, term short LSTMs or making use of uh, uh, dated uh, current unit or our anonyms or by, uh, by stacking frames. And the next is once this is there, we have a suitable approach. The next is like how many number of frames are required in a patch for extracting this temporal information. So basically we have some temporal reference so that which we using which we can uh, pass it to the detection or, or improve the detection. So the, the last question of this is like, how best to fuse the multimodal and temporal data into the object detection network and what uh, fusion schemes need to be employed. So we have a lot of information now. We have multimodal uh, information multiple, like say for example, if you're using uh, the cameras and the lidar. So we have these two multimodal uh, uh, information along with the temporal informations which are extracted using this, how this can be fused into the network. So here comes, say when we have this, when we are fusing this uh, multimodal information and the temporal data, so how exactly the, uh, it is impacting the complexity of the network in terms of time and memory. So these are the research questions. With this research questions, we have like next the uh, uh, literature review. Say the literature, uh, like uh, to start with, uh, I'll start with the data set. So which is uh, now you, you can say there are a lot of uh, recent large scale data sets which has been released for uh, development of the person, perception system of the auto, for the autonomous vehicles. So previously the most popular uh, data set which was extensively used was uh, Kitty, which has very uh, minimal amount of 15K uh, frames and with uh, corresponding 15K LIDAR data set. But in, in, the, uh, in the latest uh, releases we have been using, which is, which, which is, has a collection of uh, uh, 1.4 million of uh, 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 RGB frames with the corresponding 400K of LIDARs. So which forms a very, very good base for exploring the temporal information of in the current research work. And along with NuSense, we'll, we can, we'll be exploring like H3D, so which is released by Honda and A2D2, like uh, the Audi, Audi Autonomous uh, Driving Dataset. So again, which, is, which was released recently and start like after this we have the data set so this is how the literature review uh, evolved so it started from the 2d object detection from the 2d object detection late, later on uh, it went to the 3d object detection so in the 3d object detection it's been classified into two or uh, two like categories one is with two stage uh, uh, architecture or two stage uh, framework the other one is single stage framework in this two stage framework the popular one are faster rcn and mask rcn and our rcn family where two stage network we have this the initial stage to have the feature extraction the mixed stage is uh, involved in the region proposal network and the last stage like like basic uh, based on this two uh, feature extracted uh, we have the final year for the deduction. And in case of uh, single stage, the use of the RPN, the region proposal network is eliminated and everything will be done in one single pass. The popular uh, algorithm includes our popular networks includes the YOLO, you only look once and the SSD is single shot multi-box deduction. And like the popular data sets, which extensively used for 2D object detections are this, the KT, uh, D2CT, Pascal Walk, and uh, Berkeley Deep Drive data set. And coming down to the three object detection, uh, we have uh, we uh, we can classify in three different uh, categories like the uh, the kind of data has been used for uh, doing the uh, object detection work. So one is the image based, the lidar based, and the fusion of this lidar plus image. And the popular data sets are uh, includes the kitty as I mentioned before, the kitty nuisance H three D and A two D two. And coming down to the lidar, we have sub uh, we can uh, sub uh, categorize into the view base. So where basically what happens is the uh, lidar point cloud is can, is projected onto a uh, to the uh, uh, image space, and based on and a convolution neural network is employed for extracting the features, and followed by the region proposal, which is very similar to uh, having a uh, two stage or a single stage. Uh, to the detection network in case of oxide grade. So the, uh, the LIDAR point cloud is discretized into a 3D oxide and later uh, a 3D convolution network or uh, uh, 
or fully uh, convolutional network are employed for extracting the features and the uh, proposing or detecting or predicting the uh, boxes, or 3D uh, detection boxes. In case of the CAN structure, so instead of converting uh, to a other space, say to a 2D view space or uh, auxal grid, the point cloud is directly uh, uh, processed for extracting the uh, features and then uh, the, uh, like, it, it, like uh, direct uh, detections be done on the, uh, uh, the raw data. And in case of the LIDA, the popular ones are uh, multi-view 3D object detection framework. The uh, uh, other one is aggregated uh, uh, view object detection, the, the lower net or point pillars. So here what's happening is they combine the uh, uh, LIDA data as well as the uh, image. They perform the individual uh, detections in the uh, individual space and then they fuse these two information to better the object detection uh, process. So this is a summary and more uh, information or uh, the reference, corresponding references are uh, listed uh, or presented in my uh, transfer report. And here the next list, like uh, the image space, 3D object detection is not considered here because uh, though like we are, we can do it uh, using, uh, we can estimate depth using uh, 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 stereo, uh, stereo camera or using a single, single camera with the depth information. So it, like it involves a lot of uh, computational complexity. So the, uh, the methodologies involving images are uh, not considered in this particular research work. So instead, like what we consider is the use of temporal information. So here, only few works until now, like uh, uh, as per my knowledge, there are only two works which has been done for way which makes use of this point pillar along with one LSTM layer, which is, kind of, which is integrated between the finite detection layer and the uh, feature extraction layer, just before the feature extraction, uh, just after the feature ex extraction layer. And then to, for uh, capturing the temporal information, other one is the Yolo 4D, again the same. So here what they have used is they have used the convolutional LSTMs. So this forms kind of uh, the initial base for exploring more about the temporal information in the current research. So once we have the 2D detection, 3D detection, we, have, we need to have some evaluation benchmark. So the most popular one, we have this uh, kitty and the new scene. And in the kitty, uh, we have this uh, mean average position, we, uh, uh, no, which is uh, extensively used for uh, like uh, measuring the uh, performance, how accurate your uh, uh, algorithm is. So other one which has been proposed in the in Kitty's uh, average orientation similarity, which is the measure of the performance of jointly 2D detection and 3D orientations. And when it comes to the new scene, they have used the same uh, like measures like uh, Kitty, but with a uh, slight modification in terms of how they calculate the map. So in case of Kitty, the map is calculated based on the intersection or union. And in, in case of new scenes, so they have replaced the intersection or, 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 or union measure with a 2D center distance. So which, which like here, what uh, to, to 2D center distance. And along with the map, so what happens is the map cannot capture the velocity and, the, uh, uh, and other attribute estimations. So they have proposed uh, the, uh, to make use of uh, true positive metric which is again, uh, the combination of phi, which actually talks about the translation, which talks about the scale, which talks about the orientation, the velocity and the other attributes. So based on these two combinations, they have new scene detection score, which combines the map as well as the uh, true positive metric score and have it together to have one single scope. And with this, uh, a literature review and move forward to the preliminary work, what's been done with uh, uh, in, uh, in, in to start uh, the research work here is this. So I have these three different phases. So one is with exploring the two object detection to get to know like how exactly things are uh, being done. And then the uh, use of the uh, like the basic uh, framework for three object detection. The next is how temporary information can be included with the three object detection. To start with, the initial work started with the VDAS project, which is like uh, the objective of this project was to uh, to build one end-to-end -end pipeline for object detection and tracking. And the main uh, 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 like focus was on the object tracking part. So here what I'm presenting is the object detection part, which was initially uh, considered. The main uh, criteria for selecting this was to, uh, the model should be uh, more or less to, uh, to be working in the real time. So it should work at less than 30 milliseconds. And with pretty much good accuracy. So like uh, we chose YOLO, uh, YOLO architecture 
for the object detection task, and which was trained on, uh, uh, which was which was implemented using Keras and with TensorFlow backend, and trained on Kitty uh, data set with uh, three classes, and with the 80 is to 20 split ratio, and MS Coco weights were used as a network initialization. So here, uh, this is what uh, uh, we have got with the overall map. We got around 58%, which was okay. And the corresponding results are presented here. And moving forward to the next work was Huawei, which was kind of like uh, the next phase. So now here, the, uh, the main focus was on to use like how salient, uh, saliency can uh, influence the object detection uh, task. So here to, to, just, to just have a kind of a pilot, a pilot study to investigate whether actually the use of salience information can improve your object detection. So this was kind of the initial study which was done. And for which, what we have made use of this two, one is like uh, pre-trained SALGAN, and the other one is like SSD, the uh, single shot uh, uh, multi-box detector. So now we have an image. So for which uh, we'll be applying a generic SALGAN, this, uh, the network which is used for, to recognize the generic uh, general uh, saliency in, in an image. So what we did was we took the image, uh, like uh, divided into non-overlapping uh, non blocks, and apply the saliency on the individual block. And once we apply the saliency, we'll extract the ROIs and we crop it, we crop those salient regions. And once we crop it, we pass it to the object detection module and the detection module, uh, like where we have used SSD, which is trained on Pascal Oak 2000 set with 20 object class and we had an average uh, I mean, a map of around 76%. And for uh, like here, we have used MS Coco weights as a uh, network initializer. Initialize, uh, so once we get, uh, once we pass it, you now uh, once we apply the object detection on the uh, individual extracted uh, salient region, we uh, uh, we have the final object detection results for that. Now here, the uh, the idea was to like use like say now we have a network which is trained on one uh, uh, like one data on one data set. When we apply it on a new data set, how exactly it will respond? So with and without. So with saliency, whether it can influence in improving the uh, object detection uh, accuracy or not. So this was very much evident with the results what we obtained. So the first row uh, here uh, describes the uh, ground truth. So you have the uh, ground truth annotations. The second the in, uh, second row have the SSD detection results. So now we have just used, we have trained the SSD on uh, Pascal Walk 2007. And when we apply the SSD uh, on this, so what we have, so this is what we have got. And when we apply the SSD detection with the saliency, I mean, with better by saliency, so this is what we have got. So from this visual comparison, we can see SSD with the saliency uh, sal uh, guidance have a better localization of the uh, object in, uh, 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 in the image, and it is able to detect even the small objects. So that's what we have, uh, the inference what we have got. And from the table what uh, we have here, and table what we have here, you can see here with the SSD we have got an uh, average map of around 22 uh, percent. With sal and uh, with uh, saliency plus SSD have around 34 percent, which is clear uh, improvement and around 12 percent. So the overall, so this the bigger objects and the smaller objects. So, it's, so this uh, number was taken from Kitty uh, benchmark. So where they categorize all the uh, pixels or all the objects whose uh, uh, overall area is greater than 15 cross 15 are considered to be bigger objects and the uh, the objects which are uh, whose area is less than 75 cross 75 pixels are considered to be smaller objects. So when we apply this, the SSD, so there is clearly around 24% improvement in detection of smaller object. And in case of the bigger object, there is 12% uh, improvement. And now we have got this from the pilot study, we just like we, uh, we came to conclusion that saliency can influence or will influence in uh, improvising the object detection task. And we, instead of, so now applying the saliency as an explicit is very difficult. So we, uh, we plan to use, make use of uh, saliency as a part of the network itself. So uh, choosing a faster or two-stage uh, architecture or two-stage framework was a um, convenient option. So wherein we can improvise the region proposal network with an uh, applied or included uh, uh, saliency uh, into it. So wherein in one single network, we can extract this. So initial, initially, like uh, what we 
uh, work work with uh, two uh, like single like just use the faster RCN and how it works. So this was the experiment which was conducted here, and you can see the results. So on the basic network uh, gave around 69.441 percent map, and these are the corresponding results. And moving forward with the project, so this was the uh, pipe, uh, design pipeline uh, for the project where we have this sequence of frames and uh, followed with object detection, the, uh, the results uh, of the detection, uh, detection module is passed to the object tracking. And finally, we have the portion with the ID. The object detection part was uh, uh, worked by the few. So he worked uh, like extensively on the object detection part and I, my contribution was on to the object tracking part. So the key contribution with the object tracking was this. So use of, uh, we employed the particle, uh, the probability, uh, probability, uh, probability hypothesis density filter, wherein instead of using uh, Bar uh, Bernoulli installation or uh, uh, other uh, like single point installation, we may, we employed multi-p Gaussian uh, particle filter initialization, which is guided by the motion of the target. So how the motion, like uh, depending on the, the way the object is maneuvering in the, uh, in the scene, the distribution also adapts itself. So this is one of the uh, key contributions with the multi-p uh, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian distribution. That means uh, now in, uh, in case of data association in the general object tracking part, only IAU measure has been used for uh, data association. So here what we used is we used a weighted measure of the IAU along with the temporal histo histogram, which we will be extracting from the uh, object track history. So we'll just maintain the past few, uh, the clay, uh, like most recent uh, object uh, like histogram features of the uh, target and we'll just have a weighted histogram generated uh, generated for the current uh, frame comparisons. And also what like we have the attention map, which is nothing but a saliency or salient region in the image. And this is used for correcting your object tracking results. Same case, like have a detection failure, the object tracker predicts the probable position in the, uh, in the current frame. And now in the current frame, the position has a attention map is very less or it is not relevant, so the, uh, the predictions are ignored. And based on the, uh, the concentration of the uh, attentions, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the portion of the uh, predicted post is correct, corrected according to the attention map. So this is how it, uh, the, uh, the, the tracking has been done in this. And uh, the real distribution of the particles is based on the object motion. We just consider how exactly the object is moving. And with this, here, uh, here are the uh, KT tracking results, uh, I mean, the results obtained on uh, KT tracking data set. And clearly from the baseline, when we apply it, so there is an improvement around 5%, so which is very much good when compared to uh, just using the uh, faster RCNN with a particle PSD filter without any saliency, so there is an improvement. And the, the highlight is here, so now the mostly tracked, so the most of the uh, objects which are being tracked is increased by 12%. So there's another uh, huge increment in, in terms of uh, accuracy of mostly tracked uh, parameter. Now the outcome of this is was this. So we identify two things. So one is the, uh, the, uh, the data, what we have is dynamically in the dynamic in nature. So every scene in the, uh, the capture sequence changes a lot. And with the scene, we can also incorporate few, some of the temporal informations. So this idea of using temporal information and the requirement of having a better object detection in case of like when we move on to the 3D was kind of motivation uh, to work on 3D object detection. So now we started uh, with this. Say we consider uh, complex yellow the architecture uh, where with uh, YOLO v3 as a uh, uh, as a uh, as a base structure on which the uh, adaptation of uh, uh, 3D object detection is being done. So here, the lidar point cloud was converted to a view base. So it is kind of like bird eye view, and it is passed to the uh, uh, net, uh, like network with the six cross like regular uh, uh, like size of the image, which is like six not eight close six not eight, and then we ex uh, we. Uh, we, we make the uh, 2D object, uh, 2D box detection, and then we'll uh, remap onto the 3, 3D world. So this is what is the basic idea of this complex yellow. And uh, here you can see the represent, like, corresponding results, what we have got from uh, like having a uh, like complex yellow with 3D object detection. 
So next, like with this, having bit experience of uh, working with 3D, 3D uh, when LIDAR point cloud data and how 3D object detection can be done using LIDAR point cloud. The next uh, was, next step, uh, next step was to how temporal information can be incorporated with this. So just the work was inspired by these two paper. So one is the point, uh, like point pillars, which is latest work, uh, which published in 2000, 2019 and to which they have included one LS team there in between uh, the uh, CNN uh, like feature extraction layer and the uh, detection head, which like SSD detection. And in case of like Euro 4D, they, ha they have used uh, two different uh, forms, like two different approaches for extracting the temporal information. One is the frame stacking, the other one is like including an, or integrating a uh, convolution in the steam layer between the final detection layer and the feature extraction layer. So what here we made was like we integrated a convolution in the steam layer between the detection, the same as the previous one. And this is what we have got. So here, the complex yellow. So you can see like the average map is around 88% and with co uh, convolution like uh, like complex yellow V3 plus LSTM uh, temporal information included, we have around 80, uh, 88.22. So it's almost very slightly less. But when, when we consider the Hindi joint map, the map of the, for the car is slightly reduced. In case of pedestrian, the map is increased and in case of cyclist, it is decreased. So this increase and decrease, it's on equal terms for pedestrian increase by 7%. And in case of uh, uh, in in case of uh, cyclist, again it uh, decreased by seven seven percent. This is in case of the full structure of complex uh, full structure of Yolo V3, and there is a reduced or uh, miniature version of Yolo V3. So that's you call it as tiny Yolo. And here, the initial when we train without any uh, temporal information included, we have uh, we have around seventy six percent. And uh, like when we train with uh, uh, the same thing with then convolution LSTM integrated uh, into the network and have a temporary information extracted in which the uh, overall map decreased by 73. So this is one interesting aspect what we observed uh, during the experimentation. And also here, the similar, in, in this, uh, the, map, uh, the map of cyclists increased around 4%, but in case of the pet, it, it decreased. And the same ca case with uh, uh, car as well. So the one interesting aspect what we learned was this. So it's not like you just apply your con uh, convolution LSTM and then extract the temporal information and it'll extract, it, it, it'll improve the uh, network. Actually it is not like, but we need to have a better understanding of how exactly con uh, temporal information can be fused into the network and what is the minimum requirement. As I said in the research question, we need to identify what is the minimum a uh, number of frames that can, that can be used or that can be employed in uh, improvising or in extracting the temporal information to better influence in the final accuracy or it will increase or decrease the accuracy. So now as a uh, visual comparison, so this is what we have got with when we applied for uh, complex yellow. And here you can see the bonding box are very much compact when we compare to without applying an uh, uh, LSTM. So which means, okay, it is trying to uh, have a better estimation of the object bonding box with LSTMs. So this is trying to learn more compact. And this, with this experience, so the next in like next step was involving uh, designing the research methodology and like have, it has three phases. Uh, the digital methodology is divided in three phases. The first one is the multimodal data representation and the baselining, selection of the baselines. The other one is like exploration of multiple, uh, ex extraction of uh, multi, um, uh, multimodal temporary data. The, uh, the last phase involves in, uh, in designing a object detection pipeline. So the first phase involves the exploration of uh, multimodal uh, data, like how this data can be represented and what, uh, what is the suitable baseline, baselining can be done. So here, this is the uh, uh, timeline or uh, like, which is around five months work, wherein which involves around, like we have already, uh, so like data representation, the commonly used is like Oxal based representation or bird eye view, or in the view base wherein you, we combine uh, the RGB image and we project the LIDAR point cloud uh, uh, like uh, uh, 
projected onto a 2D, uh, 2D image. Uh, yeah, 2D image. So these are the different uh, representations which can be employed. And with the use of uh, uh, different representation, we need to study like how exactly the final accuracy is uh, affecting. And selection of the baseline architecture for further study, uh, studies like uh, these are the recent work which are being published from in, from past two years uh, involving use of uh, only the LIDAR, like uh, only the LIDAR and the other one is the fusion of uh, LIDAR test image. So we'll be exploring a uh, few of the networks and for the selection of this base learning involves one's main criteria, how is uh, like uh, we can combine like what, what is the easiest way to combine the uh, temporal ex, uh, extracted layer, extraction layer with, uh, with the base network. So this will help out in actually uh, having a, a comparison with and without uh, temporal information. And the next, uh, in, uh, ne next phase involved in like how exactly we, uh, we, are, uh, we'll, uh, we can uh, extract the uh, temporal data from, the multi from multiple modalities. So here, uh, the suitable, like what uh, the suitable approaches uh, identified for extracting temporal uh, features are this one is the frame stacking, we just stack the frames one above the other and pass it at one single uh, I mean, at once and see how, uh, how uh, the uh, like how the network is learning, uh, like uh, able to extract the temporal feature within the uh, given image or given set of image. But then is use of convolution is LSTM, which is uh, we have already used in kind of the pilot study and which gave a very good scope of uh, understanding it uh, like how temporal information is influencing the final accuracy. The other uh, next is like GRU. So now uh, from the literature, what we also identified is like GRU is used when you have very less uh, sequential frames. If we have very less sequential frames, we can make use of GRU. When you have good amount of uh, sequential frames or sequentially annotated data, we can we can go with the LSTMs. The other uh, uh, approach which can be used is uh, use of employing RNN. So this approach is uh, quite uh, frequently used in uh, text text classification. So wherein you have multiple text and then you have one output. So here we can have multiple input data and what is the corresponding output one single image. So one final uh, 3D object direction for one single frame. So how this can be done. And the use and this, like we have different, like uh, like we have identified different oh, sorry, approaches Venkatesh, for extracting temporal information. Venkatesh, sorry, I apologize. Have you long left? Uh, have you much more left? Just uh, two minutes. Okay, great, lovely. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting, my apologies. Yep. So temporal information. So here in this phase of work, we'll have uh, like investigate on, and or we'll focus on selecting the minimum batch size of the uh, of, of the data, using which we can uh, extract the temporal information and how this is uh, influencing the final accuracy. And when we include this temporal layer uh, along with uh, the baseline network, we have to again fine tune few of the parameters, which was uh, which is uh, which was previously used. So which includes like uh, what loss functions we can make use of uh, and then what is the grid map dimensions which, which, which can be employed for the little point cloud uh, conversion. And the other again, we have different optimizers. So these are, these are the different options. So now the last phase involves is the development of the object detection pipeline. So now we have the baseline with the baseline containing the LIDAR and the other baseline containing uh, like, uh, like a LIDAR plus uh, uh, image. So now this is the proposed uh, network architecture. You can see like one in the top, like here in the top, we have the LIDAR point cloud, like object detection, uh, like uh, like in, uh, is done on the LIDAR point cloud. And in the, in the bottom, like we have the uh, detection done on the image data and how these two uh, information can be fused and how this temporal information can also be fused. So there are two ways of fusion. Either we can apply post or we can apply we can apply pre or we can apply post as well. And this temporal information can also be passed to the final regression or uh, NMS uh, re, uh, layer, wherein how this can be used. So this is kind of like uh, uh, hypothetical uh, network architecture, which isn't proposed here and which have which need further uh, investigation on this, how exactly uh, the proposed uh, network work. So here for fusion methodologies, here are the popular approaches. So how, like we have the early, late or mid, mid fusion or 
having a deep fusion network or having a shortcut. So these are the different uh, schemes or uh, methodology which will be explored in this project for fusing multimodal and the temporal data into the network for uh, improving or like for investigating the uh, final accuracy of, how, of the uh, 3D detection network. So to the final training and evaluation. So training is a continuous process, which actually starts from this baseline selection to the end of the uh, project, uh, end of the research work where we have uh, we have where we have a network which is capable of uh, performing through the uh, 3D object detection. So one interesting aspect what was found was this. So use of another uh, bench, uh, other metric, which is probability based detection quality PDQ metric. This has to be investigated. So this metric is used uh, in the recent paper for evaluating the 2D object detection. So they, uh, they, so what, what is missing with respect to the map or to the current is like how exactly we have the morning box and there are a lot of overlap between this. So there is error which is involved and which is ignored. So in this probability based detection uh, quality metric, there is a spatial quality which actually measures the foreground loss as well as the background and the label quality. So we have the classification of the individual objects. So how in which, uh, what is the uh, way the object detection uh, object detector is able to classify this object and how it is like when, when we are comparing the GT with the uh, predicted one, how the quality is getting matched. The other one is like pairwise PDQ, which is the geometric mean of the spatial quality and the label quality and assignment of the optical detection. So now in the regular object detection task, when we are comparing the accuracy, we basically make use of this Hungarian algorithm with an IOU. So now instead of using IOU, so the, in the current paper, they have uh, proposed to make use of uh, pairwise PDQ for uh, estimating or for assigning the, uh, the matches. And finally, they have the PDQ score, which is the combination of uh, the pairwise PDQ and the uh, true, uh, the number of true positives, false negatives, and false positives. So this is the uh, overall research timeline. So this I've already explained uh, in my previous slides. So the next one, the identified uh, 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 like for uh, publications, uh, this uh, ICIP, uh, ICPR, uh, ECIR, ECCB, and ICML. So these are uh, 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 identified. Um, places for identify venues for pub, uh, publish uh, for publication and yep yeah thank you questions okay thanks very much for uh, i'm going to uh, now put a, a bit, let the audience ask a few questions so um if anybody would like to ask the venkatesh a question that'd be great Hey, Andrew? Yes? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, but do, do you want, uh, no, Jeff? Uh, if, if you're examining it, wait, wait until the audience is finished and then you can ask your questions. Is okay. That okay, no problem, Andrew, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so anybody from the audience other than the um, examiners like to ask a question? So I usually count from five and then throw you all out. <laughs> so I'll go five, four, Three, two, one. I don't see any hands up. So, uh, so if that's the case, if nobody has a question, I'll ask all the audience to, other than the examiners and the supervisors, to leave the uh, meeting. Thank you.